And it seems so ridiculous, but like, I don't think people are building a second, even bigger jump. And I have to go, I have to go deep into this one for a second. It's all about that thing, quitting their job and then pushing to come out and fix what they'd broken. Good morning, my aggravated avocado with a fear of arachnids. All right, what are we doing today? I've had, I had a thought, crazy Oliver, you had a thought. Um, there's nothing about my TikTok content that tells people what my real goal is, is there? Like every video is independent of the other. And every video, the hook... There's no, what am I, I'm trying to articulate that there's no reason for someone to stay and keep watching odd right well maybe they like the content but there's no like goal right i'm not i'm not making it um visible that there is a goal of what i'm trying to get to and why i'm like making the videos i do other than just because i'm enjoying them and they're fun so i had a thought and we'll we'll start working on it when we get back uh but also at the end of the last video, I asked you if you could have any superpower, but it's super weak, what would it be? And by super weak, I'm talking like you have a flying superpower, but you can only fly for five seconds at a time, or you can only fly this far off the ground, or invisibility, except you can only be invisible for five seconds at a time. Right, so stupid ones. Uh, I also. I have my answer, but I have a couple that I've pulled up here, just superpowers that I'm going to list off and like how you would make them weak, because I thought it was quite funny. Uh, super strength. Yeah, you're just a little bit stronger. Right, you're a little bit stronger than the average person. Invisibility. Being unseen to the naked eye, except you can only be invisible for five seconds. <laughs> and then you just show up. Telepathy, uh, reading and controlling minds. You can only read what someone's favorite vegetable is. <laughs> you can't read anything else, that's it. Uh, I actually, my one was time travel. Being able to travel back like five seconds back in time, like you say something stupid or you do something stupid, you travel back in time and you can change it. Or like, you're in a store and you come across someone that you don't really want to talk to, but you kind of know, just go back five seconds and change direction. See, Oliver, you're onto something. <laughs> My wife's original one was actually super strength, which I think is a pretty good one because you're only a little bit stronger, but that extra strength could probably give you a lot more. I think those are funny. All right, you know, I'm just gonna mention it right now. Uh, what I was thinking about for the TikToks was engineering each video around the idea of uh, like training myself to become the most fun dad for the two boys, right? I think I quite like that idea. Now I'm gonna work on it and tweak it. And like something like that should be the hook I think back to this series I did where I was trying to turn an RC car and a drone into like a real life rocket league car. I started off every video as like as a man child doing this. And I I I really think I was onto something with that hook. And instead of my hook being about the like directly about the video concept. It should be about the person who's doing it and the ulterior goal. And then you give someone something to buy into, a reason that they want to keep watching this person versus watching the concept play out. It's strange, like I've been focusing on like this same thing that I'm talking about for so long, like making, trying to get people to focus on the story and the person doing the story, so me. But I guess I've actually inadvertently 
or accidentally been having them focus on the concept because the concept is the hook that's what got them there in the first place I want I think I should need the person to be there because they want to see this person achieve their goal overall not just in this one video well I think we'll work through some ideas and see what works all right I've got to run over to the CVS over here so I'll see you in a bit looky looky here so we have all right I have been doing some thinking about what is it I look at my TikToks, right? And all of the scripts, all of the hooks to those videos are about the spectacle of what I'm doing. Like, this is something. I'm going to do this. And it's all about that thing. Which takes all of it away from the, the main character, which should be the focus of the video. And that's what I've been trying to do all along. It feels mental talking about Oliver, you need everything to be about you. But even if I'm myself in these videos, I'm still the main character. And whether people realize it or not, they need to see the main character progress. I'm trying an exercise at the moment. Let me share my screen. I'll share this screen. Okay, we're recording. I'm looking at the snowboarding video. I'm trying to work out there there is a way that that does well. What is that? And after my comment this morning of I need to make it more about me instead of the thing that I'm doing. I had an idea. Come on, in. Go go do that. Like if I think about who am I and why am I doing this? Hello, Judah. I'm, I'm a dad. I'm a husband. I'm a guy who likes to have fun. I don't really care what people think, so I'm more than happy to do anything that I think I find fun. Now, what is the, what's one of the other reasons that I'm doing this? Not the YouTube, the pod vlogs, it's why am I doing TikToks? I would really, I, I like to make fun videos out of the fun things I do. But equally, the overarching thing of all of this is that I want to be the best dad that I can to my son, that I can be to my son. There's obviously the monetary aspect of that, which means how can I make a decent amount of money that I can have that kind of life? not just buy him the things that he wants or needs and not just have a nice house with those things, but the financial freedom of my time to be able to do those things. And I still want to make videos because I love doing that. But how do I get to that spot? And I've realized that like this snowboarding video I'm making up reasons as to why I'm doing it that I think people would play along with in terms of a story when actually the real reason I'm doing this is because one, I enjoy doing it and two, like I want my son to look at me and the things I do to the point where at some point in his life he can be like, my dad just did the things that he wanted to do and I want to live that same life. I don't want to have to live a life of following other people's rules and not be happy. It's so, it's so deep, isn't it? But I, I think I've been masking, like those are the real reasons. And so if I stop, if I stop playing into these like flaws and strengths that aren't really my flaws and strengths and start just like, using the real reasons why I want to do these things, then those would be much better and I can use those to be more real. So here's an example of this. The 
snowboarding video. I don't know if you've seen it, but it, it didn't perform very well. The hook is, that's me building a jump, and that's me with a $35 snowboard from Target. There was a time that I thought that was really good, but even so, like let's let's say that's a really good hook. That's about the jump and the snowboard, right? That's not about me. So I've I've thought I've gone through lots of different iterations of this, but a new hook is this is how a dad impresses his son on a snow day. Snow day, that word everyone loves, right? Because you get off school. And dad impresses son, takes it away from the spectacle of does he actually make a huge big air jump and more of um, does this guy enjoy himself and what he's doing. The only thing that I'm concerned with is there's not going to be the payoff in terms of my son watching me do it and be like, wow, because I just don't want him to be on video and also he's not going to be ever saying that to me. <laughs> um, so it has to be along the lines of like me having fun. I'm not sure exactly how that payoff works yet. But I am I'm working at tweaking the script so that the journey isn't about me building a huge jump and moving away from being, from lacking self-confidence to then gaining confidence enough to do it. It's about a guy who's going to do a thing because he wants to do it and wants his son to be, to enjoy it too. What I haven't really thought about, sorry, I guess I somewhat thought about it, but I don't really know what to do with it. How does, I, I don't want my son to be on camera. So there's never going to be a payoff of my son like thinking that I'm really cool. But I thought I'd show you how I'm adapting the script. So we have our I guess for the moment. Okay, we have the normal script and then, sorry, the original script and then script two. So we have a hook and then the point of no return with a snowboard for ages six and up, I made my way up the biggest hill in Kansas. And then, what was I gonna do here? Oh yes, I'm changing the story. Instead of always having the goal of building a big air jump, I change it that, like I want him to think I'm cool snowboarding down, but actually that doesn't look cool at all. And so I go to build a jump and that doesn't work out. But what I do want to teach him is to have fun doing it is, doing whatever it is you do. See, that just feels, that feels way more real. That feels, it's nuts that I haven't realized that prior to now. Like just how simple it should be for me to make these videos. And like then a dad wanting to be the best dad and impress his son becomes the persona around Odd Right which I, I would like people to see it that way. Um, with a snowboard for ages six and up, I made my way up the biggest hill in Kansas. I had a second thought about this, which is how I actually tell this story. There's a part of me that wants to have just like one bullet point in each of these steps for the story, like maybe just a couple of words, and then I just talk.
should we try that instead of instead of wording it all out just talk and, and it should feel way more authentic than reading off of a script no we're going to do one experiment per video because I don't know I, I do want to try that but maybe I'll do that as extra but for this post I'll just change one factor and then we can actually test things properly. So with a snowboard for ages six and up, I made my way up the biggest hill in Kansas. So hard without bindings. The biggest hill in Kansas. But try after try. There was no way a son could ever think their dad was cool with the way I looked. So I needed, a, uh, let's do like crash. So I needed to try something new. I don't know if you remember, but in the last, in this video, this section here, I actually, I think it's here. So let's listen. I built the big air jump I came out here for, unaware my next failure was because I didn't have the confidence of a fierce animal. Come on, yes, yes. There was a big, pretty decent sized drop off at this point where the viewer sees, oh, he's made his big air jump, but it actually sucks. So, all right, I'm done. And what I tried to do was tee up that there's this failure, like what you're about to see doesn't go well, but I do have a plan to make it better. But I don't think I got that well enough. I don't think I got that across well enough. So that's what I'm looking for here. So I needed to try something bigger. Try after try, there was no way a son could ever think that dad was cool with the way I looked. With the way I looked. So I needed to try something bigger. I began working on a big air jump. With the pressure building, with the pressure building, I began working on a big air jump. Oh no, wait. I try the ollie first and then I try the jump. But try after try, there was no way a son could ever think their dad was cool the way I looked. So I need to try something here. I had... a bunny hop. While a bunny hop Wasn't perfect. Mm, where is that bit? I got snow in my boot. I six and up in hand. I set off. I got the biggest hit. Oh, that bundles. Now with a bit of confidence rushing through my veins. I got snow in my boot. I moved on to the hole. Why not? I built the big head. Um. I moved on to doing all I need to try something bigger. Then Why we go not? down the slope. I built the big head. Okay. While here we go, okay. While the bunny hop wasn't perfect, 
it gave me the idea I needed to make sure my son really thought I was cool. I I built a big uh, jump. Bear bell. There's a new DJI mic coming out. I don't know how much it's going to be, but it's probably going to... It has 32-bit recording, which from my understanding means that it won't peak which would be much better for your audio listening experience. But I don't know when I'll buy it, if I'll buy it. I would like to invest in it so that it's a better audio experience for you. But it's probably going to be like three, four hundred dollars, if not more. And so I might need to wait a little bit. We'll see. I built a big air jump, but even that, uh, I built, here we go. What would be phase one of the big air jump? But I think that set me even further back on the cool dad scale. Quite like this lane, Fa failing harder than the time I asked your dad out on a date. Keep that line, I think. Um, Standing above an even bigger jump I'd been pounding. What am I thinking over here, Oliver? I'm thinking How do I fit in that the message isn't about looking cool, it's about having a good time doing, enjoying yourself doing something. Um. Building the second jump, building the bigger jump, building a second, even bigger jump. Um, I don't want to put I realized because I don't want every video to be like, I realized it was about having fun. I realized it was about having fun.
building a second, even bigger jump. Hmm. How do we add in with a smile on our face? It's like, how do I get the message across without saying the message? That's something that I don't feel very confident in at the moment. So like I could say here, with a smile on my face and not caring about whether I made it or not, I built a second jump, blah, blah, blah. Maybe that's a good way to go with it. With a smile on my face, I don't even remember what I just said. <laughs> with a smile on my face and building, with a smile on my face while I built a second, even bigger jump. What did I say? Hold on. I do that. If I move positions like dramatically, Hello. <laughs> then I get the dog. Duda likes to, to say hello. Don't you, Duda? So I, like, I normally edit like chilled out back with my feet up on my stool back here. Anyway, what I wanted to show you was the fact that I've made some changes. I'm very happy with how they've come out and I thought it would be good. Honestly, I thought you might find it interesting, but I'd also be very interested to see if you see a difference here. Uh, so if I pull up the three videos and we'll watch them one by one. So version one and then two and then three. All like, very different stories to them. Let me record my screen, okay. Are you ready? You ready, Judah? This is number one. To my friends and family, this means I didn't make it. I saw Garrett Castro doing this huge jump on a snowboard, and even though I don't have that fierce animal confidence, I wanted to try it. Except I've never been off a big jump, and I don't even have a snowboard. So here's my plan. Get a snowboard from Target and see if I'm gnarly enough to make it down a hill. It's so hard without bindings. I imagine by this point there'll be some confidence like rushing through my veins. I got snow in my boot. So I'll move on to trying an ollie. Buddy hop. And then finally build this big air jump. Come on, boy. We can do this. Oh, come on. Yes. Yes. Oh! I have this weird voice in my head telling me that the jump's not going to be big enough and that I need to make it bigger. If this thing doesn't pop me on top of Lowe's, I don't want it. I guess time will tell if I've built up enough confidence for that. I imagine myself stood halfway up, paralyzed with fear when I come to this realization that we can control our own emotions, and then I just unleash the confidence of a fierce bull. Come on. Oh. Or something like that, but sub to the vlogs for behind the scenes. I, it was the hook that really killed that. I like, I really liked that style. Uh, as if like, sharing my plan and then showing the clips that did happen in the plan but i don't think with the way people passively watch on tiktok like i'm sure a lot of it was my fault too in the way i put it across but i don't think people are yeah i don't think i positioned it properly for people to be able to see it for what it was right like so not like it's the viewer's fault they just ignored it because like they'll see it if it's done really well, obviously didn't do it well enough. Uh, I don't know what, I really don't know what I would change about that at the moment, but it's something to reflect on. If I have a similar idea, I know not to do that. <laughs> That's me building a- Sorry, this is 
the part two. That's me building a jump, and that's me with a $35 snowboard from Target. Even though I use wow. a cutthroat razor to shave, whoopsie daisies, I don't know if I have that fierce animal confidence to hit a big air jump, something I've never done before on a snowboard. With the snowboard for ages six and up in hand, I set off up the biggest hill in Kansas. It's so hard without bindings. Now with a bit of confidence rushing through my veins, I got snow in my boot. I moved on to doing an ollie. Body hop. I built the big air jump I came out here for. Unaware, my next failure was because I didn't have the confidence of a fierce animal. Come on, yes, yes. Oh! Failing harder than the time I asked your dad out on a date, a voice in my head was telling me, Yeah, so that needs to be bigger. Which was definitely my first time ever hearing that. Dwight Schrute's mega desk can suck it in comparison to what this will be. Near paralyzed with fear, but knowing I needed to do this for the pod vlog, I unleashed the confidence of a fierce bull. Come on. Oh. Yeah, none of that helped, but I had fun. Right, so you can still see the spectacle is actually about the jump and how good the jump is. It's not about me and my progression through the story. So this is where it changes, I think. Right, like this is how I think about it and I probably get stuck in my own thoughts. This is how a dad impresses his son on a snow day. With a snowboard for ages six and up, I made my way up the biggest hill in Kansas. Speed. But try after try, there was no way a son could Go ever think their dad was cool with the way I looked. I got snow in my boot. So I needed to try something bigger. Bunny hop. While the bunny hop was far from perfect, it gave me the idea I needed to make sure my son really thought I was cool. I built what would be phase one of the big air jump, but I think that set me even further back on the cool dad scale. Yes. Oh. Failing harder than the time I asked your dad out on a date, a voice in my head was telling me, Yeah, so that needs to be bigger. Which was definitely my first time ever hearing that. Building a second, even bigger jump, the smile on my face told me I didn't really care if I landed it or not. I just wanted my son to know life is about enjoying the experience, even if it means dramatically standing on a hill for a drone shot and looking like a walking ick. Come on. Oh. Great success. I like that a lot more. I I have a slight uh, fear that I didn't make it obvious enough that there was that I was on phase one of the jump and that there would be more to come. Hopefully, I did. I feel like that was pretty obvious. I don't know, so I'll stop it there and see how we're doing. Um. So we're about, how fast is it going up? It's about 10 views every couple of seconds, which is decent. Hi, Duda. Hi. She act like I was gonna hit you. Do you think I was gonna hit you? Dude, I've never hit you, Mrs. Duda. Oh, yes. It's so bloody cold here in Kansas that these dogs, their feet get so um, cold being on the snow and whatnot, that they can't go out for long. So I have to take the two dogs out separately, unless it's in the morning, because they just play with each other and then they don't go to the toilet and then they're whining to go out to go to the toilet and then they just play together. Oh, oh, I got him chicks. I was having a chat with, I don't know if I should say his name yet. I was having a chat with a guy that I've recently been talking to, anyway. He was, I know him through, we met through something else, but he's been watching the pod vlogs and he said it's very interesting how you are a creator for creators almost. And he said, have you ever thought about like doing collabs with people who do like podcasts or other creators for the creators type thing? And it's crazy that I've never thought about that because who, who is likely to be my main audience? It's gonna be primarily people who are interested in content creation and like what goes into it and where I feel like I am and sharing like my thoughts, my experiences, the things I try, the things I fail at, etc. So if that's my route to target audience and then they end up getting to a point of hopefully enjoying what I do enough that they will enjoy parts of the video that aren't about editing. 
how do I reach more of that audience? And it seems so ridiculous, but like just emailing people who have podcasts, who do talk about creators and see the, what I can do to help them to then get access, get exposure to their audience. Now really, like all of those are just business terms, but really the plan is how do I present what I have to offer in the way I do it to someone who could potentially be interested, right? That's really what that all means. And so when I say exposure and audience, it's just, we're, we're talking about people, obviously. There's a new DJI mic coming out in a few days. I mentioned it, didn't I? <laughs> like literally two hours ago, maybe on my clock, if that. Um, okay. Uh, what else was I going to do today? This this is essentially me trying out uh, this new style of what if I make the videos about like why I'm really making these videos because I enjoy doing something and so that my kids will see that life is about enjoying the experiences. And I have to go, I have to go deep into this one for a second. When I say life should be about having fun, I understand that that seems like a very out of touch thing to say. That's a very I don't know, privileged thing to say, whatever. But really, why is that not the goal for all of us? Why is the goal not to wake up in the morning and do something you want to do that day to have fun. Like, and don't get me wrong, I, like, I feel like I can say this because I've worked hard to get myself out of that position into a place where I can do the things I want to do every day. Well, I guess I'm not fully there yet, <laughs> but soon, fingers crossed, soon. Like, isn't, that should be the goal for all of us. Like I feel, I do feel very proud about this and I don't, I don't talk about what I'm about to talk about next because I want to rub it in someone's face or I want people to look at me and think better of me. But like I put in the eight hours, sorry, the eight years of two job work, like working a full-time job and doing this on top of it to be able to get to this place and if someone's gonna come along and say, you're out of touch, you don't get it, like you're not living in the real world. I've lived in the real world. I just chose, I chose to make choices that would get me out of that reality or move me into a different reality, so to speak, because I don't wanna talk negatively about the way someone chooses to live because like we all have different ways we want to live and perhaps someone wants to live their way differently to others. Also, this, this is kind of nuts. Speaking, just look at this. Hi, what are you doing, dude? Huh? Are you a good girl? <laughs> Stay. Just look at the way she sat up. Oh, you can't, because I'm in the way. Sorry, <laughs> I was blocking most of that. Um, I told this story about the difference between giving up and moving on. And the guy I was speaking to earlier, he recently quit his job. And I said, like, what was the driver behind that? And he said, you know what? A large part of it was that giving up and moving on story. Like there is a difference and instead of giving up on something, it, sorry, instead of continuing with something even though you know it's not gonna work out or don't think it's gonna work out, you move on to a different opportunity or you move on to looking for a different opportunity because you know it's just, it's just a waste of your time. And it, but first of all, <laughs> that's a crazy responsibility to feel responsibi responsible for saying something that caused someone to think about their life and do something as drastic as quitting their job but you know not that i'm saying he needs me to look over him of course not um but it's really cool 
to, and I don't take it lightly, like having the, I, won't, I don't know if I'll say ability, but sharing my experiences and how amazing it is that my experiences could help someone else with something they're going through. It's very, like this video that went viral on YouTube Shorts the other day, I think it's like 8 million views or something now, was taking a Mullen pill, which was meant to help like cleanse your lungs. I just saw it, I thought I'd try it, and I shared my experience doing it. But it's like, once you see a number of likes or a number of views on a video, people read, they look at that and they think that someone's telling you what to do. I'm not telling anyone what to do. I, I don't, I'm not promoting going to buy Mullen and trying it for yourself. Like, here's my experience. If you want to go and try it, go and try it. I don't care. But I understand that there's a responsibility on the creator in this case. But I, th I feel like it has to be on the audience side of things to know the full responsibility does not lie on the creator. Oh, Rui's up. I will be back in a bit. Two, I guess three. Two major things, one stupid thing, before we close out today. One, I figured out, well really it's not just figuring out, it's just putting it down on paper. What is my goal? What am I, why am I doing this? To do fun, funny, entertaining and challenging things I think I'll enjoy. That basically just means, like sometimes there'll be things that I want, that I think I'll enjoy, but I don't actually enjoy doing, and that's okay, because then you move into that scene of giving up versus moving on. But it has to fit under those pillars of being fun, funny, entertaining, or challenging. Number two is to teach the experience, was it? teach that the experience can be worth it even if the outcome isn't. So a lot of things you may go into and you may fail at the end or something will go wrong at the end and you don't get the outcome you expected. But that doesn't mean that the whole journey on the way there wasn't either enjoyable or you didn't learn something from it on the way. Make money to not think about money. I know that that sounds silly, doesn't it? But money is the, I think, the main stressor in life. And if you can get out of that cycle of doing things because you need to make the money, then you can move into a life of doing the things you want to do because you really want to, in to do them. That's what I think. That's where I'm aiming for. People always say that the more money you have, the more problems you have. I, don't, I wouldn't know yet. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Finally, Make my son into a man that his kids can be proud of. That's super deep, isn't it? Like when I think about parenting, I think you're making a human that you're gonna put out into this world. When you wanna give that human the best possible chance of being the best possible version they can be of themselves in life. And the way I see it, if you can put yourself you know, into a position where you are, a, you are a really good dad, I'm not talking about your own opinion, but you are a really good dad, I think that's the winner. So yeah, I think we'll try and, I just, I'll think I'll remember that and try to get that across in videos because I, I don't know, you don't see, not that I'm trying to like separate myself or make myself seem better. You don't see many creators doing it because they really, really love it. They're doing it because there's a decent sum of money behind it. I don't know. I mean, I don't want someone to look at my content and think, oh, it's just another creator. I want someone to, to see why I'm doing this in the hopes that it helps them somehow, right? Like give it, give it deeper meaning. The other topic was, oh yeah, really proud about this actually. 
So we ordered a dishwasher. The guy came to install it last Wednesday and something broke on it. Anyway, Friday I spent pretty much the whole day on the phone trying to sort it out. We got a refund for the installation and we still had a leak under the sink. So it was like trying to sort that out. I really, it was the first time that I've really pushed and pushed and pushed in that situation to get what I think is fair, is right, which is a refund on the installation and then pushing to get the um, contractor or the company that contracted to come out and fix what they'd broken. But they refused, they required us to do claim forms and whatnot. So over the weekend, um, we worked on it and we fixed it. It wasn't that big of a thing, but I have no experience in plumbing. I don't know what I'm doing. And it's just one of those situations. I think I had four different receipts from four different times I went out to get things because I just had no idea what I needed and what I didn't need. But ended up getting it to working. And I think the message in that is like you can... Well, I, I don't think I don't need, there doesn't need to be a message. It's more of just like I'm I'm proud of. It sounds like I'm the kid who would never call the doctor's office, and now suddenly I have. No, it's like proud of myself for not just saying okay and rolling over just to just so that the problem's done and out of the way. Like really pursuing it and getting it done. Final thing. All right. I don't know if you've noticed at the beginning of the videos, I've only been doing it very recently. Uh, asking you a thought provoking question. So we did the one from this morning today. All right. You have the power to eliminate one major global problem like hunger, poverty, disease, something like that. What would you choose and why? Now I've got to bloody think about that all night, haven't I? Cool. All right. Best of luck. And I was thinking about doing this. I had the idea of just making stupid TikToks that are just over a minute. Like I see, I've seen this kid who will take like five gallons of water and he'll just set his phone up and he'll just drink with like chopsticks or a fork and how long it takes. It takes him like tens of hours. I thought, what if I did a time lapse of chewing chewing gum until the flavor runs out? It's so dumb. But it would be an easy way to make money and for some reason people might enjoy watching that. I know we're doing it like extreme flav different flavors, different gum from around the world. And also seeing how long it takes, like this will be for us. How long does it take to fill up <laughs> this? <laughs> with gum, which I saw in Dollar Tree when I went yesterday. Don't know what I'm doing with this. There we go. See you tomorrow.